for Hawaii. And they have the deep threats as well. Brennan on first down from the 29. In the flat, catch is made. It's Ryan Grice Mullen, and he's across the 45 for a first down, and he breaks another tackle into Aggies territory and out of bounds at the 44. Paul Igboli on the tackle. Big play on first down. Let's take a look at this Warriors team that uh, they're so good uh, offensively, and they also love Nate Ilawa, the 254-pound senior. Great feet. It gives him a running presence. Yeah, he's got great size and the ability you know, to mix something up in between the pass and the run. And the center and tackles, June Jones believes, are NFL bound. Satele, the leader, the senior in the middle. Three guys on that offensive line as well mentioned being drafted. First down after the big catch by Grice Mullen. Ball at the Aggies 43-yard line opening series. A little shovel pass and incomplete intended for Ilawa. They like to do a lot of that with the running back. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see him mix in a lot of different things on this offense, and that's what makes him so good. Here's a look at the Utah State front wall. They battled injuries throughout the year. Bevan Howard, sophomore from Scottsdale, the brother of Lauren Howard, who's at Arizona State. Cumbie's the guy that makes the most plays in the middle, but Igboli playing very well as a freshman. And in the secondary, Terrence Washington, the leader back there, he's their most experienced defensive back here in Logan. Yeah, Coach Brent Guy said he's the old guy back there. He, he's the one that sets everybody up and tells them where to go. Second and ten after the incompletion. Brennan and company at the 43. Near side and incomplete. It was caught momentarily, it appeared. Sample had it and then stripped free by Marquise Charles, the two-year starter at corner. You'll see this Utah State defense give Hawaii a bunch of different looks. They've had teams sit back against them and play zone defense. They've had teams come against this Hawaii offense and try to attack the quarterback. Utah State's going to try to give it a good mix on both sides, just to try to give the quarterback different looks. Look at the numbers on third down. Leaders in the whack, and they'll have to convert a third and ten to improve those numbers from the Utah State 43. Four receivers, the single back, Ilawa. Brennan has the snap. Plenty of time. Now he steps up, evades a tackle over the middle. Catch is made. It's Dickerson, and he has a first down inside the Utah State 30. The team leader in all purpose yards, the senior moves the sticks. Key John Murphy on the tackle. And that's Brennan's ability once he gets back there in the pocket. This offensive line, we'll talk more and more about how good they are, but uh, he has the ability, as you see him back here, he wanted to go to his left originally. He has a read that comes back to the backside. One guy that he can always come back to in case people are covered on the front. He finds that guy and he gets help from his receiver. Dickerson comes back to the ball and helps him out. Look at the numbers for Dickerson in that slot position. We talked about his kick return prowess, but he is a big play guy. And has three touchdowns in his last two games. First down after that 14-yard pickup at the Utah State 29. Brennan over the middle, wide open, and the catch made by Grice Mullen, and he takes it in. Grice Mullen, the sophomore from Rialto, California, and Hawaii makes it look easy as they take it on six straight possessions and put 68 points on the board last week against Idaho. Starting this series from the 31, inside handoff, Ilawa, and he bangs his way across the 30, drives forward to the 32-yard line. This is a 254-pound guy. Igbo, uh, Igboli tackles him. He has great feet, though, for a guy that size. Yeah, and anytime you can get a guy that big that uh, is running downhill, and they talk about running downhill, that's just running over people at that size at 255, and, you know, defense coordinator Mark Johnson, he was concerned about him, too, because you worry so much about their passing, you know, he has the ability to just uh, run you over. And that's why you worry about the passing. Look at that, 163 attempts, 20 touchdowns, and the last time he was picked, he got to go all the way back to a game against Eastern Illinois in non-conference play. On second down and short, handoff inside, Ilawa, he breaks a big one into Utah State territory and down to the 35-yard line. Rumbles the Virginia native Marquise Charles on the tackle. He runs a 4-5-5-40, and he's a runaway freight train. He is. Actually, his nickname is Nasty, and you can see why at the end of this run. You know, he does. he's not a guy that's going to run run out of bounds with that size and the speed that he has he's just going to try to impact somebody at the end of this you see him try to just run over the tacklers and uh, June Jones said he's probably the best player on the field he thinks Brennan's probably the most talented guy as far as uh, you know skills wise but Brennan may be the best athlete 
First down at the Utah State 34 is the Hawaii rushing game. Maybe the best rushing numbers June Jones has had at Hawaii. Very confident in what they can do. Brennan looking deep down the middle of the field. Sample can't come up with it. Ian Sample had to gauge that ball. He had looked one way and had to change his course of direction. Still almost came up with it. You can see his ability in sample. All these guys have such talent and the ability to find the football. He's tied for the team lead with eight TDs on the year, so you know he can catch the football, and he makes a great adjustment by going after this. He's had some big games this year. Couldn't quite come up with that one. Had five catches. Two of them went for touchdowns in a victory against Nevada. Second down and 10 from the 34-yard line. Colt Brennan, the junior from Irvine, same high school as Matt Leiner. Pressure coming, throws in the flat, catch made by Bess. And Bess has a first down for Hawaii. Devon Hall on the tackle. Bess, their leader in catches and yards. And Jun Jun call, calls him a better Andre Risen. Yeah, he's uh, fourth nationally in catches per ball game, but a lot of credit has to go to Colt Brennan, the way he just lost this ball over the top. You know, these guys can catch the football, but it's because Colt Brennan can lay it right on the money. Nice touch as he just throws it over the top, and that comes from throwing so many bubble screens that we haven't even seen this Hawaii team throw yet. You saw his numbers. Uh, averages almost seven and a half catches per game for this Hawaii team. First down at the Utah State 24-yard line. Brennan trying to lead him to another score. Has the ball, little flare, and that ball is caught for a loss by Ilawa. Lost a yard on the play. Yeah, that's a design play by this Hawaii team. They take their running back and they kind of chip off of the end and make him get some contact and turn around. It's really a quick screen is what it is. The offensive line initially make contact with their lineman and then they try to go out and get in front of him. But it's a design play that works real effectively against the U Utah State team or any team that's going to rush the quarterback aggressively. You remember, Alawa has 40 catches on the year. Averages over 11 yards per catch from his running back position. Second and 11 from the 25-yard line. Midway through first quarter. Hawaii looking good on their first series and their second as well. Brennan looking near side for the pylon and incomplete. Intended for Chad Mock, the senior from Honolulu, Marquise Charles on coverage. Credit Marquise Charles here doing a nice job defensively in the secondary covering this. This Utah State team is trying to challenge these Hawaii receivers. They're walking up on them and trying to play some man-to-man -man defense. And you'll see this Hawaii team, if Utah State continues to do that, this Hawaii team will continue to throw the ball deep on this one-on-one -on -one coverage. Third and 11 now for June Jones offense. The leader in so many categories in the WAC and nationally as well. They average over 528 yards of total offense. Third and 11. Brennan, pressure coming up the middle. He has some room to run. He's going to tuck it. Brennan has the first down, and he's out of bounds to the 13-yard line, showing his ability to run the football. He moves the chains. Devon Hall pushes him out of bounds. Well, when you're a quarterback and you have great speed and the ability to make people miss, it really puts pressure on defensive backs. You can see him looking at him. They know he's going to possibly run the football, but you do not want to give up your responsibility to these receivers. And these receivers are trying to make their way open or find a hole in the in the defense. And uh, defensive backs just don't have the ability to cover a guy and try to protect the quarterback from getting that first down. He has a couple touchdown runs this year. Picks up 12 on that play. First down now at the Utah State 13. Hawaii trying to add to their early 7-3 lead here. They'll go trips to one side this time with Devon Best in the slot, setting up the screen, caught by Alawa, inside the five, takes it in. Touchdown, Hawaii. Two Late first quarter, Hawaii two for two, couple touchdown drives, they'll go to work from their 31-yard line. In motion, Devon Best, the sophomore from Oakland, now he sets up on the near side, and they have penalty flags, they're going to blow this play dead. Well, Utah State is really mixing it up what they're doing on defense. Before the ball can be snapped, ball start, number 84 on offense. Five yard penalty, first down. So they'll back him up. Of course, Hawaii is waiting 
uh, for a bowl invitation should they get a victory here. Don't forget, it's Christmas Eve, December 24th, the Sheridan Hawaii Bowl, live on ESPN from Aloha Stadium in Honolulu. Fifth year of the bowl has produced some spectacular fireworks on the offensive side. This year, join us. Leave that cold weather behind. For ticket info, 808-548-BOWL in Hawaii. Outside Hawaii, 800-291-3999. Hawaii goes to the ground game and not much happening as Frank Miley busted that play up. The defensive tackle did a nice job for Utah State. Well, we mentioned break and serve. That's what this Utah State defense needs to do here. You know, when your offense doesn't go down and score, you want to rely on that defense to go out there and make a stop. And, uh, you know, if Utah State can stop them here and give their offense a chance to get back on the board and just stay in this ball game early. Loss of five on that last play, second and 15 now back at the 26-yard line. Four receivers, three to one side for Brennan. Half roll, throws downfield, Best has it. He's at the 40, and he's knocked out of bounds, about a yard shy of the first down. Coverage over there by Caleb Taylor, the strong safety, but so quick on the delivery, Brennan, and uh, you turn around and the ball's there. Jay, yeah, you, I was just going to mention that. As you watch him throw the football, kind of like a slinger, just slings it to the side, and that's part of the run-and-shoot offense. You know, Mouse Davis and these uh, coaches, Dan Morrison, works with the quarterbacks, try to get rid of the ball quick. That's what it's all about. It used to be three-step drop. It's a lot of shotgun now, but just get rid of the football and get it in the hands of the playmakers. He's trying to make it three for three on third downs. Third down and two from the 39-yard line. Brennan has the snap, sips it over the middle, incomplete. He wanted Dickerson. It is fun to watch if you like offense, and most people do. First down for Hawaii. Short field as they go to work. Pass complete to Dickerson into Utah State territory and knocked down at the 48-yard line. Devon Hall, the Aggie back, sophomore on the tackle. Go back to that Hawaii Bowl. Timmy Chang didn't actually start that game. Didn't come into the third series of that ball game, and you see those numbers that were put up. So, you know, they could just put them in at halftime, and you'll still, you know, still put up some huge numbers. Chang's still uh, unbelievable. Uh, Brennan's not going to catch him in terms of total yardage and those things. But Brennan, June Jones feels again the best quarterback he has coached, and uh, he is not disappointed today. Four yard completion on that last play. Second and six now at the 48. In the backfield now, Regan Maia, the senior in for Ilawa. Brennan has time, wants best. Diving attempt can't come up with it inside the 30-yard line. They really like to stretch the field, uh, not vertically, but to the sidelines. Yeah, they do. What they do is they put two, two receivers on both sides and try to balance out the defense, and then it gives Colt Brennan the opportunity to pick either side he wants to go to. And uh, that time when he had the wide open field, he was able to get the corner route in there. He makes a nice throw. That was one of the first times you won't see Best come up with a uh, great catch. There you see Timmy Chang's numbers. He really set the standard uh, for great Hawaii quarterbacks. And Brennan trying to take it to another level. He could cap off the best season ever at Hawaii under June Jones, who uh, if they run the table, they could have some special things on the horizon. Here's Brennan throwing and incomplete. Can people turn it over and... Uh, giving uh, this guy number 15 an opportunity. Brennan, little shovel pass, Ilawa has room to roll. He's to the 40, Ilawa to the 30, he may go. The 10, he takes it the distance. Touchdown, Hawaii. 60 yards for Nate Ilawa. Off the shovel pass from Brennan, and Hawaii extends the lead to 20 to three. Well, Trey, you mentioned that the guy has four, five, five speed and uh, you know, if you had any doubt that he had 455 speed at 255 pounds, that should get, give you your answer right there. Get the football as you look at the turnover margin. That has been a big story for this team during their five game winning streak. First down, handoff. Ilawa turns the corner. He cuts it back. He's to the 40, bangs his way down to the 35 yard line. 14 yards on that carry. That is just has to be a frightening sight for a corner and for a linebacker. Now Utah State's defense is trying to do whatever they can to slow this Hawaii offense down and they're mixing things up defensively but as soon as you're ready to stop the pass they start handing the ball off to the inside you can see them trying to blitz doing whatever they can it's not like they're sitting back not trying anything Hawaii's just making the right calls and that's what Colt Brennan can do for you is he can put you in the right position by you know 
reading the defense and then trying to make the right calls and putting their offense in that situation. Yeah, Hawaii has just enough of a running game uh, to keep them honest. It opens up the passing game even more. Bevan Howard in the last tackle. Brennan to throw it this time over the middle. It's Rivers. Breaks a tackle. He's to the 10, and he's in the end zone. 35 yards. Brennan to Jason Rivers. And the junior from Oahu pulls in his seventh touchdown grab of the season and is 27 to 3. And Jason Rivers is not a guy you typically see to the inside. He's not one of the slot guys. He's the taller guy, 6'2, 192 on the outside. He's the guy more of a vertical guy that you expect to go deep, but uh, caught a slant pattern. At the highlight package from the first half, it was Hawaii early and often. Colt Brennan to Ryan Grice Mullen for the first score. And then they got the running back going. Nasty Nadalawa on the ground. And then he did it as a receiver as well. A little flip over the middle for a score. A short variety there. And then 60 yards on this pass play for Nadalawa. And Hawaii was off and running. And then the defense showed up. Yeah, we mentioned that many times. They've been pretty aggressive defensively, and then you know, defense stops them real quick, and then back to the offense. Jason Rivers, as you see uh, what he's done over the last 175 pass attempts, very impressive. The numbers so, thus far only 10 completions in this game, and there's number 11, Ilawa, up the middle, and he has room to run into Aggies territory. 30, Ilawa to the 20, and tackle from behind, and dropped at the 10-yard line. Tackle made by Dervin Spite. It looked like Ilawa was going to go all the way. Again, another about a four-yard pass and a 60-yard uh, run. And this Hawaii team, boy, when you have somebody that big, just why not do this? I mean, you, you, it's that's why you average about 75% completion percentage and uh, you know have all those yards pass and just give it into the playmaker's hands. Now, don't don't take me wrong. Colt Brennan can throw the football and he can throw it up the field if he needs to. But if you don't have to, why not? You know, just put yourself and your team in a situation, you know, not to not to turn the ball over. That was a 60-yard run and that was Antonio Taylor, the strong safety that finally got him. He changed his number from 24 to 21 before the start of this one. Brennan now looking for the end zone. Throws. Best has it. Touchdown. Hawaii. And that is five touchdown passes for Brennan, and that ties the school record for touchdown passes in a season 38 now for the year for the junior. Wow, Hawaii had them set up here. The corner just bites up on the in, uh, on the outside receiver, and when he does that, the inside receiver just runs a corner route, and that's why Colt Brennan is so good. He just really quick release, just gets it to the outside and gets it in his hands of Devon Bess, and now that's why he's got all these touchdown passes. You just react to a defense and just get rid of it quickly. And Kelly tacks on the extra point to make it 35 to 10. Well, you get an 80 play drive from Utah State, uh, time consuming, blue collar, and then Hawaii turns around and they come right back at you and they find the end zone. That's why this team is so good. They're up by 25. Of course, the great experience in the, in the NFL and. Uh, has found a home with June Jones at the University of Hawaii. First down from the 32 for Brennan now. In the flat, catch made by Dickerson across the 40. Has a first down, and he's up close to midfield. As he's finally tackled by the safety on the play. That's Caleb Taylor, the sophomore. 18 yards right there. Yeah, Xavier Bowman, another guy, they're mixing in here. A freshman giving them a lot of experience, and you'll see them go to these young receivers. They're not afraid to throw it to these guys. they got a nice mix of juniors, seniors, freshmen, so they got a good mix to learn from. And as these freshmen see these older players have so much success, boy, it just builds for them. Here's a look at Coach Glanville, and look what they've done the last five games. After a, a tough start, the losses to Alabama and Boise State, I mentioned earlier, costly in terms of turning the ball over. Now, early in the year, you know, you're playing against the Alabamas in the world. You're trying to force turnovers. You're not getting them. You get into, you know, the WAC conference, some other things. You can start building up on those statistics a little bit. But this defense, you know, it's it's how are you doing? Are you, are you climbing that ladder? And they're getting more and more successful week in and week out. And the confidence continues to build for this Hawaii team. And uh, they shut out Idaho in their last game, holding the Vandals to only 133 yards of offense. So clearly they're playing their best football. Now a penalty is tacked on against Utah State after the play. 
personal foul variety. So that moves at 15 yards down to the 35-yard line on Derek Cumby, the middle linebacker. He's the guilty party. June Jones. Ask him about, uh, from a personal standpoint, of, he has to be having a good time. But uh, this has really become home. He, it is his program. He's really put the stamp on it. Yeah, and we talked about Jerry Glanville being there with them. And uh, Mouse Davis, a guy we haven't mentioned yet that's a running back coach for them. These guys have been together before, and he said that they're having more fun now. And winning will do that. Yeah. That'll, yeah. They'll have a little bit more fun that way. But uh, he's saying that they've had more fun now than he ever had in coaching. We understand Cumby has been ejected. So the guy they just gave the personal foul penalty to, Derek Cumby, they started middle linebacker has been ejected for the game for Utah State. Brennan to throw. Sips one. Caught by Lane. Lane to the 25. Lane to the 20. And he's by from behind by James Brindley, the freshman, at the 17-yard line. And here's another guy that's a part of their offense. Malcolm Lane, second catch of the year. The freshman from Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, another freshman, too. Every receiver they have, they just don't want to go down. They refuse to go down. And it's run after the catch or that rack yards they talk about all the time. I mean, that was the thing that Utah State's defensive coaches were worried about going in. They said they're good at catching the football, but they can really run afterwards. He had a 58-yard catch, and now has another nice gainer inside the 20-yard line for the Warriors at the 18 now. Four receivers, and Reagan Maia now in at running back. Brennan looking to throw, has time, fires back in the end zone, caught by Grace Mellon, touchdown Hawaii, and they get six touchdown strikes for Colt Brennan, and that is a season high, and they extend their lead. Well, we've talked about his little shovel passes on how he shovels it to the running backs, but here's a good example of how he kind of just shuffles his, shuffles his feet out to the left. Nobody's open. He finds a guy and then just delivers a strike. You know, not he didn't have to drill that in there. The guy was open, so he just kind of tossed it in there. At the 31-yard line for Colt Brennan and the Warriors trying to add to their 32-point lead. Handoff, Ilawa hit. And he's knocked down. Ben Childs, a defensive tackle with a nice play. The 264-pound junior from Spring, Texas, was there to meet him in the hole. And you wonder when this Hawaii team's going to kind of just go to a more traditional running game and do some things to kind of chew up the clock a little bit. But this team's not built that way. Not traditional you know, for them, huh? No. <laughs> the, run, the run and shoot's designed, you know, where you, you know, you're not in a traditional type of offense. So... You know, some teams will say they you know, run up scores on people, but that's just the way this offense runs. Ryan Grice Mullen in motion. Single back remains Ilawa. Brennan, plenty of time. Now a little pressure coming. Now he throws. Best tips it, and it's incomplete. Couldn't come up with it. Drew Pearson on the coverage from his cornerback spot. Good job defensively for Utah State. Uh, offensive line for Hawaii giving Colt Brennan plenty of time. And we talked about, you know, that's one of the things that this offense has done for Hawaii is they've created a bunch of offensive linemen in the NFL. I think they've got eight linemen over the last five to six years in the NFL. And, and we asked Coach Jones about, you know, you know, guys in the run and shoot type offense. He says it's because they're more aggressive. They like to go out and attack people when they're blocking. And uh, NFL scouts know that they're good pass blockers when they come out of Hawaii. Rupert and Esra the tackles. He feels they're NFL bound and Samson Satelli the leader likely to play on Sundays as well at the center spot. Third down and 10. Rolling right Brennan. Motioning. Throwing over the middle. Incomplete. He had Bess open. He missed him. Trying to make a sliding catch inside the 20 yard line. Now an Aggie has lost his helmet at the 35. That's Frank Miley the Sandy Utah product. And fourth down coming up. So fourth down from the 32, and Brennan's going to stay out there. Fourth and 11 for the Warriors. Already up 42-10. Reagan Maia in at the running back spot. Pressure coming. Ig Bowley from the backside throws, and it's intercepted. It's picked off because they're, they're going to win this football game, it appears, up 42-10 to 10 from the 14-yard line. A little shovel pass. It's a low one. He is room to roam. He's to the 30. Can't break that tackle, and he's not down to the 35-yard line. Or he could have ripped that one off for big yardage. Terrence Washington, maybe a touchdown-saving tackle. Still a big pickup. Yeah. 
same play, different time, different part of the field. You know, just shovel pass to the inside and uh, good footwork. And as he gets up through there, once he breaks through, he just uses his power and speed. And again, that's a pass completion. So 330 yards now for Brennan to go with the six touchdowns. First down to 35. Still a minute plus remaining here, third quarter. Brennan trying to add to his number, setting up the screen, caught by Maia, and he's tackled from behind. Nice play by John Overton, the freshman, who's from Honolulu. This game meant a lot to him. He had to play well. He was voted Hawaii Defensive Player of the Year. And uh, a man of few words, according to the coaches, but Overton wanted to play well, was offered a Hawaii scholarship, and... Uh, they said they wanted a gray shirt him. He said, no, yeah. I'll go to Utah State. And the question, when you, when you asked him yesterday about him, was he excited about playing in this ball game? All they could say is, yeah, we think he's pretty excited about it. He's just a quiet guy and doesn't say anything. Um, but they, uh, they they were sure he was he was pretty pumped up about playing against Hawaii. Two-time All-State player out of Honolulu. Here's a pass, and it's knocked down at the line of scrimmage. And first time they've done that. And Colt Brennan could not complete it. Nice play that time by Carl Singleton came up there to knock it down. When you're watching Colt Brennan play, anytime there's an incomplete pass, you can see him shaking his head. It's it's like when you're completing 75%. He, he just uh, it, it gets depressed whenever there's a ball that hits the ground, and that's tough to do is complete 75% of your passes, even if you're just in pass scaling and you're doing 7-on-7. Seven seven. He's 17 of 28 through the air of this one. Third and eight from the 37. Pressure coming. Brennan going deep, has Grice mulling open, catches it in stride, he's to the 20, inside the 15, dragging Brindley inside the 5, and they'll have a first and goal at the 3. Brennan to Grice Mullen, already has two touchdown catches and almost had his third. Well, you see those two receivers, they're close to each other, and they run a vertical where all four receivers go deep, and the quarterback has the opportunity to pick one or the other. This time he goes to the outside guy. The receiver on the inside actually lets this ball go. He actually doesn't come after it, and these receivers, once they catch it, former tailbacks, they do not want to go down. They smell that goal line, and they just continue to drive those legs, turn the legs, and try to pick up the yardage. 413 yards through the air now for Colt Brennan. Yards after catch, quarterback's best friend. I guess so. They've had a bunch of them here tonight. Bryce Mullen split out with three receivers at the top of the screen. They'll run option pitch to Ilawa. He takes it in. Nate Ilawa, and that'll go as a rushing touchdown because that was a pitch backwards, but he finds the end zone again. And for a running back, that's what you want. You down here on the goal line. You said, now I've taken all the forward pitches from you. Give me a back pitch and let me get a rushing touchdown in here. And you can see the smiles all over these Hawaii players' face on death. Yeah, just a, a, a well Because they're, they're going to win this football game, it appears, up 42-10. to 10. From the 14-yard line, a little shovel pass. It's a low one. He is on to own. He's to the 30. He can't break that tackle. He's not down to the 35-yard line. Or he could have ripped that one off for big yardage. Terrence Washington, maybe a touchdown saving tackle. Still a big pickup. Well, same play, different time, different part of the field. You know, just shovel pass to the inside and uh, good footwork. And as he gets up through there, once he breaks through, he just uses his power and speed. And again, that's a pass completion. So 330 yards now for Brennan to go with the six touchdowns. First down to 35. Still a minute plus remaining here, third quarter. Brennan trying to add to his number, setting up the screen, caught by Maia, and he's tackled from behind. Nice play by John Overton, the freshman, who's from Honolulu. This game meant a lot to him. He had to play well. He was voted Hawaii Defensive Player of the Year. And uh, a man of few words, according to the coaches, but Overton wanted to play well, was offered a Hawaii scholarship, and a... Uh, they said they wanted a gray shirt him. He said, no, yeah. I'll go to Utah State. And the question, when you, when you asked him yesterday about him, was he excited about playing in this ball game? All they could say is, yeah, we think he's pretty excited about it. He's just a quiet guy and doesn't say anything. Um, but they, uh, they they were sure he was he was pretty pumped up about playing against Hawaii. Two-time All-State player out of Honolulu. Here's a pass, and it's knocked down at the line of scrimmage. And first time they've done that, and Colt Brennan.
rebound and could not complete it. Nice play that time by Carl Singleton who came up there to knock it down. When you're watching Colt Brennan play, anytime there's an incomplete pass, you can see him shaking his head. It's it's like when you're completing 75%, he, he just uh, it, it gets depressed whenever there's a ball that hits the ground, and that's tough to do is complete 75% of your passes, even if you're just in pass scaling and you're doing seven on seven. He's 17 of 28 through the air of this one. Third and eight from the 37. Pressure coming. Brennan going deep, has Grice balling open, catches it in stride, he's to the 20, inside the 15, dragging Brindley inside the 5, and they'll have a first and goal at the 3. Brennan to Grice Mullen, already has two touchdown catches and almost had his third. Well, you see those two receivers, they're close to each other, and they run a vertical where all four receivers go deep, and the quarterback has the opportunity to pick one or the other. This time he goes to the outside guy. The receiver on the inside actually lets this ball go. He actually doesn't come after it, and these receivers, once they catch it, former tailbacks, they do not want to go down. They smell that goal line, and they just continue to drive those legs, turn the legs, and try to pick up the yardage. 413 yards through the air now for Colt Brennan. Yards after catch, quarterback's best friend. I guess so. They've had a bunch of them here tonight. Bryce Mullen split out with three receivers at the top of the screen. They'll run option pitch to Ilawa. He takes it in. Nate Ilawa, and that'll go as a rushing touchdown because that was a pitch backwards, but he finds the end zone again. And for a running back, that's what you want. You down here on the goal line. You said, now I've taken all the forward pitches from you. Give me a back pitch and let me get a rushing touchdown in here. And you can see the smiles all over these Hawaii players' face on death. You know, just a, a, a well board on. It's easy to do when you have a big lead. Well, it's like wildfire right now. You know, everything they're doing on both sides of the ball coming up golden for the Warriors. And now Tyler Grockey, the Tucson product, is in at quarterback. He throws downfield and incomplete. Intended for Michael Washington, the sophomore slot receiver. Brindley was back there on coverage, but they have made the switch at quarterback now. And this guy is uh, not too shabby in a backup role. Grockey, a sophomore from Tucson, he's completed 23 of 30 on the year. Yeah, and as a backup quarterback, you wonder how, how in the world do you come in a ball game when you get that big of a lead and you're in the run and shoot offense? How do you have the opportunity to throw the football when that score is like that? But that's what this offense does, and you can see that's why he completes almost 80% of his passes. He's got a great accuracy as well. As a, a touchdown run, couple touchdown tosses, and the slot catch made by Rivers. Rivers inside the 20, and as a first down, down to the 15 yard line. Tackle made by Josh Taylor, Grockey's best game this year. He was 9 of 12, 164 yards and a touchdown against Idaho. And he's a guy just you know, kind of a, like out of a mold of you know, watching him warm up before the ball game as they were going through everything they were doing out there. It's just like a machine, what they do with their quarterbacks and the way they use their footwork to the way they throw the football. Both guys kind of just sling it from the side, and that's, you know, that's the coaches talking to him about the ability of getting rid of the ball quick. Now this run and shoot system uh, fits perfectly for Colt Brennan and Gronke making it look good as well. A flag is thrown as he looks to throw over the middle and completes the pass. Hauled in by Chad Mock, the senior for first down. Washington on the tackle, but there's a flag to sort out on the Hawaii side of the field. Well, you see Gronke there just kind of step up in the pocket, keep his eyes up the field, has nice footwork, and then just delivers an accurate... Illegal formation on the offense, only six men on the line, five-yard penalty, first down. June Jones says, though, he can plug the quarterback into the system. He's going to make him better. You get a lot of opportunities to improve your delivery and those kind of things. You being a former quarterback, you could understand that, right? Well, yeah, he said he, he takes average. You can take average quarterbacks and make them really good quarterbacks, but you get a really good quarterback like they have, and you can make them a great quarterback. And, you know, you can look and say, well, that's okay because it's the run and shoot. How many guys have been successful? Well, Jim Kelly was able to do it and stuff, and he thinks that these quarterbacks, Colt Brennan especially, is an NFL guy and can do it in the NFL one day, not just in the run and shoot. Gronke going for the end zone, and that is out of bounds. Far side intended for Michael Washington to hold it in, but he did not get his feet in near the pylon. June Jones has coached some impressive ones. He says Brennan's the best he's ever coached. Well, look at these names. You mentioned Jim Kelly. How about Warren Moon with the Oilers? Jeff George, Rodney Pete. Unbelievable. Yeah, and, and, and that specific question was asked about, you know, yeah, that's the run and shoot, but can he play? Can they play in the NFL? And he said, well, look at those guys. 
and they basically all have had great success. And he expects Brennan to be playing in the NFL. Still has another year. Remember, only a junior. Rocky, a sophomore, in the game. Going for the end zone. Has a man. It's incomplete. And open was Chad Mock. And he couldn't haul it in. And credit to Utah State's defensive backs today. And when they've been able to cover them or have been on them, they've been able to strip the ball out of their hands. The, the tough thing is the way Hawaii spreads the ball around and throws those bubble screens and the inside screens, it's a matter of staying on them. When the Utah State defenders had an opportunity to be on the receivers, they've done a nice job of uh, breaking up passes. Third and 15 now facing Gronke and the Warriors from the Aggies' 21-yard line. Maia remains in the backfield, four receivers. Cronkey setting up, firing over the middle, and it is hauled in for a first down. Catch made by Washington, and Terrence Washington on the tackle, but Michael Washington went low to get that one, and they'll have a first and goal. He had all kinds of time to set his feet. Yeah, he certainly did, and Michael Washington, only two catches coming into the year as a sophomore, or coming into this ball game, and, but he does, he sees the defenders deep, and they'll teach these guys in the run and shoot. If you have a defender over the top, you just want to kind of break it off and curl it to the inside, and he just delivered a strike, and you know, that's the difference these guys start learning through the as the years get go on they get better and better reagan maia the 296 pounder in the backfield they're going to throw though gronky for the end zone rivers he's in the corner he's in touchdown hawaii seventh touchdown pass of the game six for brennan and the first one for gronky as rivers beat josh taylor to the corner and they have eclipsed 50 points in this one well, you can only so, say so much about these receivers and their ability to go up and catch the football, and uh, they just make such good adjustments while the ball's in the air, and uh, that's not an easy catch to make. You, you know, kind of a Willie Mays catch over the top, and, uh, you know, it's... Didn't play a complete game, didn't need to. Six touchdown tosses, found Bryce Mullen a couple times for scores, had one interception, but... Another day at the office for Mr. Brennan. Yeah, it sure is. You said not a complete day. It was a complete day of every, any any snap that he was in there. He just didn't play the full 60 minutes as you must state. It looked like a good play, and they had the turnover, and uh, Hawaii ends up with the ball. Looks like a pretty good tackle for the uh, former Brave from Bountiful High School, a suburb of Salt Lake City just south of here. So at midfield now, Hawaii goes to work with Brocky and company. Hand off to Reagan Maia, running right and tackled on a nice play. That was Daryl Fields, the linebacker that tracked him down. But Maia, you, you know, you, you talk about Ilawa at 254, then you bring this guy in at 6 foot 296. Yeah, it, Are you kidding me? It's okay if you're a defensive lineman on the inside, but if you're a defensive back at 185 pounds, you were scared enough with the uh, you know, two, 254 coming at you, but not 296. It's not even fair. I mean, you had another 40 pounds uh, to the running back uh, late in the game. He leans on you. No, and, and if you go low and try to tackle him in the legs, his big legs could hit you in the, in the helmet, too. So look at him drive the football. There he goes, moving the pile forward, close to a first down. Needs to get it to the 39. Carl Singleton, a 258-pound defensive tackle on the play. He gives away 40 pounds to make that tackle. So third down and short coming up. There's Maia. He is he was born in American Samoa, three years at San Joaquin Delta Junior College, and from Stockton, California, a senior for the Warriors. He's also played some defensive line for this program as well. Had a start last year against Michigan State. Why not? He weighs more than all the deep, <laughs> any defensive linemen that they have, and these guys are going to the NFL. Rocky to throw on third and two. Wide open is Washington, and it's incomplete. He had some room to run, too. And fourth down coming up. Here's a look at Colt Brennan. We talked about the numbers, and look at the numbers this season. It's hard to top what he did last year, but he did. And he still has games to play this year, too. And uh, the impressive thing is, you know, the interception side of it. Uh, you know, 13 last year. You would think, you know, throwing the football as much as they do, balls would be tipped. But the accuracy that he has, he gives his, his receivers a chance to catch it. And tip balls come from throwing balls high. But he hits guys right in the chest. So on fourth down and two, the Warriors will go for it from the Aggies' 41-yard line. Gronke. Throws, catch made, first down grab is made, and they'll move the chains as 
They can convert it. Aaron Bain hauls it in. Sophomore from Honolulu with his seventh catch of the year. Marquise Charles on the tackle. Now you can just mix in, put anybody in the slot position, move them all in for this Hawaii team. Everybody gaining experience, and so many guys have contributed by catching the football. And you know, you've just seen that tonight with uh, the ability to kind of move the ball around. And even this Hawaii team on fourth down, they're not going to punt it. They're going to continue to try to drive the football. Approaching the seven-minute mark in this one, Hawaii headed to a bowl game as they go a little shovel pass. It's Maia. He's inside the 20. The big 300-pounder inside the five, and he's knocked down. First and goal from there. John Overton, the defensive end, finally tracks him down. And Maia with a big gainer. That's just his fourth catch of the year. He does have a touchdown reception this season. Now and at the end of this run, Marquise Charles, you can see him fighting in the end zone, trying to fight off a block. And I just don't know how you have the the guts to be able to go after a 296 pounder. You can see him at the end of this trying to fight off a tackle and trying to save a touchdown here. But uh, you know, that's you see him throwing a shoulder at him, and uh, I don't know if that was a, a good idea, <laughs> a good idea or not. When 296 pounds coming at you. Well, we talked about how they led the nation in total offense. There it is, and they have eclipsed that today on the road. In the whack. Gronke pitches it and a touchdown. Taking it in for the Warriors. Sunshine, surf, all the kind of things you, the, that you love that time of year and great football as well. Here's a handoff to David Farmer for the Warriors and he takes it to the Aggie side of the field to the 49 yard line. New quarterback is in there now for Hawaii as they've gone to their third guy, Inoke Funaki, the freshman from Oahu, seeing some action. Now the freshman trying to get some experience in here, perfect time, you know, late in the ball game, and you know, you want to try to get as much as you can, uh, difficult time to do it coming in, you know, with with a 53-point lead, you know, you don't want to throw the football and try to run things up, but uh, Hawaii's going to run their offense and do what they can out of the shotgun. Funaki of Tongan Heritage chose Hawaii over BYU. And he is their holder, was redshirted last year, seen limited action at quarterback this year as they hand it off to Farmer, and he loses yardage. Frank Miley, the defensive tackle on the play. It's a guy that started a couple games last year against USC and San Diego State. They love their quarterbacks, don't they? Yeah, they do. And, <laughs> and as a quarterback, you would love to go to Hawaii because it gives you an opportunity to throw the football. And how about from a receiver standpoint? If you know, if you want to go catch the football and go, you know, put some put some numbers up, that's a place that you can go. Three and a half minutes to go. June Jones team rolling. They are appear to be peaking at the right time, offensively and the defensive side of the ball as well. On third and eight now. Tanaki play action is going to keep it. And he's going to be short of the first down as he takes it down to the 46-yard line. 